Today, on Tuesday, January 26, 2021, the Nanda Dasa Youth Buddhist Team will recite and explain the Mangala Sutta. Firstly, the history and importance of the Mangala Sutta will be explained. Then, our team members from Burma will recite the Mangala Sutta in Bali. Our New York team members will then follow in reciting the Mangala Sutta in Bali, as well as the English translations. After the translations, the 38 Mangalas will be explained verse by verse. Finally, an in-depth explanation of the sutta will be given. We will now begin. About Mangala Sutta. Sutta means a discourse. Mangala means blessing, a spiritual sign or a good omen. In ancient India, people wanted to know what constituted a real good blessing makes life happy for them. This issue was even raised among deities, divas in the heavenly planes. For 12 years, human beings and the deities argued, debated, and discussed about it. Some would say that horseshoes, rabbit foot, and clover leaves, etc., are auspicious or lucky signs, while others would say that lucky signs are turtles, owl, or life trees, etc. Some referred blessing as what is pleasurable to the senses, things that are pleasing to the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. However, no satisfactory answer could be obtained. Then Devas, or Tawandinsa, heavenly realm, approached Saka, the leader of Devas, for his use. Saka advised the Devas to consult the Buddha. Thus, one midnight, a certain deity with his suppressing splendor, came to visit the Buddha at the monastery of Anatta Pendika in Jaita's Grove near Sawadhi. He asked the Buddha for the true meaning of blessing. In response, the Buddha delivered a discourse known as Mangala Sutta, in which 38 highest blessings were enumerated. This is why Mangala Sutta is customarily chanted for blessings on auspicious occasions. Besides, these 38 blessings are ethical and spiritual in nature, providing a step-by-step -step training on the journey of life. This sutta sums up Buddhist ethics, individual and social, and ultimately leads one to liberation from suffering. The blessings told in this sutta serve as majestic and general guides throughout life. Here are Buddha's teachings on how to get fit for great wealth and happiness, and how mangala, or blessing, is what yields happiness and prosperity. The blessings start with the value of avoiding bad company for the sake of good enough living and having a basis of spiritual progress, and ends with telling about the clear mind. The ideal set forth here may bring progress for the individual and the society, nation and mankind. Here we find family morality expressed in the most elegant verses. A happier life should be won after following these injunctions as long as it takes so as to make one's essential conditions fruitful. It is sure that not associating with the foolish will bring you happiness because the foolish are not only stupid and uncultured, but also wicked in thought, word, and deed. Opposite is associating with the wise, though. Morality consists of things to be followed and avoided. To cultivate good, one should be honest, truthful, and upright. Discipline oneself in thought, word, and deed. Along with these positive activities, it comes ceasing from evil, such as killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, lying, slander, harsh speech, useless talk, covetousness, ill will, and false views. To be humble and polite in manner, to be content with a simple life and grateful, not missing the occasion to learn the Dhamma, to be able to serve and support your parents, to cherish your own family, to have a vocation that brings you joy, forbearance with respect to intoxicants and steadfastness in virtue. This is the greatest happiness. The Mangala Sutta sketches a path that yields 38 blessings. 
that begins with the most elementary step of good friendship, passes through the living of a wholesome household in life, the development of inner virtues, and the pursuit of spiritual cultivation. It culminates in the highest liberation, which is Nibbana. Dear friends, let's chant it respectfully. Mangala Sutta, Jam Mangala, Wada Sahi, Jenda Yang Sufa Dewaga, Sutana, Nadiga Chanti, Eta Ding Sanja Mangala. Nanti Dam Dewa Dewina, Saba Baba Wina Sanam, Saba Loka Hita Taya. Mangalam dam banama hi. Ewa me sutam. E kam samayam. Bagawa sawati yam. We harati. Jeda wane anata. Pedi kasa arami. Ata ko. Anya dara dewada abikanda ya radiya abikanda wana gewalakapam jeda wanam oba sedwa ena bagawa denu pasangami upa sangami dwa bagawandam a be what did wa a gum and them a tarsi a gum and them tita co sa di wata bagan one them gata ya a japa si a who de wa manu saja magalani a jenda yo a gan gamana so tanan ruhi mangala mutaman. I say one not ja, balane, banditane, ja, say one na, buja, ja, buja, ne, ete, mangala, mutame. Badi, rubati, sawa, so ja, ube, ja, gada, bonyada, ada, sama, baniti, ja, ete, mangala, mutame. Jaja, see Banja, Mina Yoja, Susi Kito, Suba Sita, Yawa Ja, Edam, Mangala Mutaman, Mada Bitu Upatanam, Huda Darasa Sangaho, Anagula Ja, Gamanda. Eta Mangala Mudamam Tanancha Damachariya Nyataka Nancha Sangaho Anawajani Gamani Eta Mangala Mudamam Already we ready, Baba Majabana Jasayamo Abamado Jadam Mesu Edan Mangala Mudaman Tarao Ja Niwa Doja Sandu Tija Katanuda Galena Dama Sawane Edan Mangala Mudaman Ja Sawa Jasadam Samana Nanja Katsanam Putasa loka dame, he did them yasana gambati. I saw gam, we read jam, came, 
edam manggalamu damam. Kita di sini katwana sapata ma prajita sapata seteng kacanti dam desam manggalamu damam. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Yam mangalam dwada sahi jinta yin su sa dewa ka sotanam nadi ka chanti atatim sancha mangalam. For 12 years, what blessing was, men, also deities, tried to find out, but they couldn't find them, which numbers are 38. Dishitam dewa dewena sapa papa vinasnam sapa loka hitataya mangalam tam banamahe Those blessings taught by the Buddha which destroy all evil. For the benefits of being, O oh good people, let us recite. Ewa me sutam ekam samayam bhagava savatiyam viharati jetavane anata pindikasa arame atako Anyatara devata Abhikantaya ratiya Abhikantawana Kewala kapam Jetawanam Obasitwa Yena bhagava Tenupasan kami Upasan kami dwa Bhagavantam Abhiva Dedwa Ekamantam Atasi Ekamantam Titako Sadevata Bhagavantam Kataya Ajabasi Thus I have heard on one occasion the Exalted One was dwelling at the monastery of Anatta Bendika in the Jeta's Grove near Sawadi. Shortly after midnight, a certain deity, whose brilliant appearance illuminated the entire Jeta's Grove, came to the Exalted One. After approaching, he respectfully bowed to the Exalted One and stood to one side. There he addressed the Exalted One in verse. Bahu Deva Manusaja Mangalani achintayum akang kamana sotanam bruhi mangalamutamam. Many deities and humans are thinking about happiness, wishing for happiness. Please tell me the greatest happiness. Asewanacha balanam pandita nancha sewana. Not associating with the unwise, associating with the wise, honoring those worthy of honor. This is the greatest happiness. Living in the proper environment, having done meritorious deeds in the past, setting oneself in the right direction, this is the greatest happiness. Bahu Vina yoja susikito subasita ja yawaja etam 
Mangala Mudamam. Become and learn, become knowledgeable, being well trained and disciplined, speaking in a meaningful way. This is the greatest happiness. Matapitu Upatanam, Buddha da Rasa Sangoho, Anakula Chakamanta. Eta Mangala Motamam, serving one's father and mother, providing for one's spouse and children, being orderly in one's occupation. This is the greatest happiness. Dhanancha Dhamacharya Cha, Nyataka Nancha Sangaho, Anawa Jani Kamani, Eta Mangala Mutamam. Sharing and being righteous, helping relatives, avoiding harmful actions. This is the greatest happiness. Arati Viruti Papa Majapa Nacha Sanyamo Apama Docha Demesu Etam Mangala Mutaman Seizing and abstaining from evil, refraining from intoxicants, being diligent in virtue. This is the greatest happiness. Garawo cha, Niwa do cha, Santu di cha, Ketan yuta, Galena, the Masawanem, Aitem, and Galamutamem, showing respect and being humble, content and grateful, hearing the Dhamma at the proper time, this is the greatest happiness. Ganti cha, Soa cha, Sata, Samana nanja. Dasana Kalina Damasaka Cha Ayutam Mangala Mutumam Being patient, speaking kind and gentle words, meeting with spiritual people, discussing Dhamma at the proper time. This is the greatest happiness. Tapo Cha Brahma Chariyan Cha Ariya Sachana Dasanam Nibana Sachikiriya Cha Etam Mangala Mutamam, exercising discipline, living a spiritual life, perceiving the noble truths, and realizing Nibbana. This is the greatest happiness. Putasa Laka Damehi Chitam Yasana Kampati Asokam Virajam Kemam Etam Mangala Mutamam if one experiencing worldly conditions, one's mind is not shaken, but remains fearless, free from sorrow and passion, this is the greatest happiness. Those who follow this path will remain undefeated and will prosper in every way. This is the greatest happiness. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. In verse 1, the Buddha was asked, what are the highest blessings in life? The Blessed One replied, the supreme blessings are. In verse 2, there are three mangalas. One, asewana chabalanam, not associating with fools. Two, Banditana Jasewana, associating with the wise. Three, Puja Ja Puja Niyanam, reverencing those worthy of respect. They are all together three mangalas. In verse three, there are three mangalas. Number one, Bhati Rupa Desawa Socha, residence in a suitable locality. Number two, Pube Chakata Punyata, having made merit in the past. Number three, Ata Sama Bani Dicha, one's mind properly directed. Altogether, there are six mangalas. In verse four, there are four mangalas. One, Bahusa Janja, profound learning. Two, Bahusibanja, proficiency in one's work. 
three. Vinayo ja susiki do. Well learned moral discipline. Four. Subasi da ja yawa ja. Gracious kindly speech. There are altogether ten mangalas. In verse five, there are three mangalas. Madapidu upadanam, giving support to parents. Puta da rasa sangaho, cherishing wife and children. Anakula chakamanta, business pursuits, peaceful and free from conflicts. This makes thirteen mangalas. In verse six, there are four mangalas. Number one, Dhanancha, acts of giving. Number two, Dhamacharya cha, conduct according to Dhamma. Number three, Nyataka Nancha Sangoho, helping one's relatives. Number four, Anawa Jani Kamani, blameless actions. There are altogether 17 mangalas. In verse number seven, there are four mangalas. Number one, Aradi Baba shunning evil. Number two, we the deep Baba abstaining from evil. Number three, Maja Banaja Sanyamo refraining from intoxicants. Number four, Apama Docha Demisu diligence and practice of what is Dhamma. Altogether, there are 21 mandalas. In verse number eight, there are five mandalas. Number one, Garawocha. Reverence. Number two, Niwa Do Cha, humility. Number three, Santu Di Cha, contentment. Number four, Geta Nyuta, gratefulness. Number five, Kale Na Dhamma Sawanem, timely hearing of the Dhamma. There are altogether 26 Mangalas. In verse nine, there are four Mangala. One, Gantija, patience. Two, Sowa Jasata, meekness when corrected. Three, Samana Ninja Dasanam, meeting monks. Four, Galena Dhamma Sakacha, discussing the Dhamma at the proper time. There are altogether 30 Mangalas. In verse 10, there are four Mangalas. Number one, Tapo Cha, energetic self restraint. Number two, Brahma Chariyan Cha, holy and chaste life. Number three, Ariya Sacha Na. Dasanam, insight into the noble truths. Number four, Nibbana Sachi Kiriyacha, realization of Nibbana. There are altogether 34 mangalas. In verse 11, there are four mangalas. Putasa, Loka Damehi, Chitam Yasana Kampati, a mind unshaken by the ups and downs of life. Number two, Asokam. Freedom from sorrow. Number three, re rejam, freedom from defilements of passion. Number four, KMM, perfect security. There are altogether 38 mangalas. Verse 12, Eta disani katoana, sabata ma parajita, sabata sotim kajanti. Those who have acted in this way cannot be defeated and always live safely. The suttas of the Buddhist scriptures begin with Ewo Me Suttam. Could you explain about the brief history of Ewo Me Suttam? The history behind this short sentence is as follows. Some three months after the Buddha's death, the first great council was held on the royal patronage of King Ajata Sadut at the city of Rajagaha. There, 500 arahats assembled to recite, classify, and group together the teachings of the Buddha. Venerable Maha Kasapa presided. The council finished its work after seven months. In the council, they arranged the entire teachings of the Buddha, that is, the collection of the Vinaya rules and the suttas. It was in 483 BC. Venerable Ananda, as he was the most learned in the Buddha's discourses, rehearsed the suttas in the great council. He prefixed each discourse with the expression, Ewa me suttam, thus I have heard thus personally testifying to the authenticity of the suttas. At that time, religious teachings were generally were committed to memory, and so the Buddha's teachings too were presented at first in this way. 
Vernable and then Da's words, thus I have heard, were prefixed to the memorized version, which thereafter was passed down from teacher to pupil by oral tradition, until it was committed to writing for the first time in Sri Lanka about 83 BC. As the Venerable Ananda was a devoted attendant of the Buddha, his words, thus I have heard, prefixed to the Mangala Sutta, as to most other suttas. The three names, Sawati, Anatta Bindika, and Jitawana, are very popular in Buddhist scriptures. Could you tell us about these three names? Sawati was an ancient city which is on which is identified with the village of Sahe Maha in the present day Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. It was the capital of the powerful kingdom of Kosala in the 6th century BC. As a pilgrim, you could visit there and can see some Buddhist monuments. Anatta Pindika was the great merchant and benefactor whose real name was Sudatta. He brought Prince Jeta's pleasure grove in this city for a fabulous price, said to be as much as 18 crores of gold coins, and built a monastery which he presented to the Buddha. The monastery was called Anatta Pindika Arama, and the grove is known as Jeta One, Prince Jeta's grove. Here, the Buddha stayed for 24 rainy seasons and gave many important discourses. The Mangala Sutta is one of them. In the sutta, it says Anyatara Devata. How do you understand the word Devata or deity? In Buddhist teachings, there are six realms of celestial beings, Deva Loka, superior to the human world, which together comprise the happy states in the world of sensual desire or Kama Loka. These beings are of greater or lesser splendor and brilliance, and they live very long lives enjoying the happy fruits of their past good Kama. On the expiry of this, however, they gravitate toward rebirth in accordance with their residual merit, for the devas make little new good karma and can be compared to rich people living on their capital, which will run out sooner or later. The new rebirth is not necessarily a better one. Though short-lived, human beings are in a way superior to these celestials, as he can increase his merits by further wholesome actions and can even attain the highest goal, Nibbana. That is why even celestial beings look to the Buddha for guidance and to noble ones for assistance. There are many stories of heavenly messengers visiting the Buddha. They usually visited him late at night, as the accounts say, when the night was far spent or just before dawn. There are other heavenly states appear to them, namely the world of subtle form, Rupa Loka, and the formless world, Arupa Loka. The former has 16 realms, while in the later four realms, inhabitants are super celestial and even longer live. Their lifespan running into thousands of eons. Still, they are also subject to change. What does the puja cha puja nyanam mean? Puja cha puja nyanam means to pay homage to those worthy of homage. The examples are the Buddha, monks or bhikkhus, holy persons, parents, teachers, all of whom are of of great assistance to us in life. Some people do not like to show respect or to express reverence, even when it is quite proper to do so in the presence of those who have greater and purer conduct in mind, speech, and body than they have. Such people suffer from pride. They estimate themselves too highly and do not want to admit that others could have achieved more than themselves. They are, so to speak, standing in their own light, and they will not be able to see the right way to go. Their pride will only lead them to the strengthening of other defilements of mind, and so they go from bad to worse. They have shut the door in their own faces and can go no further, and how they quarrel with others. Respectful persons are not like this. They are a pleasure to live and associate with, unlike people with much pride. They not only fit well into whatever society they are in, they also have the ability to learn more since they recognize that others know more than they do. So they have one of the factors necessary for any progress, whether in worldly prosperity or on the path of Dhamma. This practice of honoring the honorable is the foundation for humility. I will discuss with my Dhamma friend about Badi Rupa Desa Wasoja. Nicole, could you please explain what does Badi Rupa Desa Wasoja means? 
Ati rupa desa waso job means residence in a suitable and pleasant locality. To have a pleasant life, the dwelling place must be comfortable, secure in construction, tidy and clean in appearance, properly maintained, and besides, it is helpful if it is in a good neighborhood and inhabited by agreeable people. Residence in a place inhabited by quarrelsome and troublemaking citizens where one is bossed about by a dictatorial and corrupt government, where the climate is inimical with frequent ravages by floods, famines, earthquakes, and epidemics, where the air is charged with hatred and mutual suspicion, and where freedom of thought and action are reduced to a minimum. In brief, residents in a place having many factors and conditions obstructive to the practice of Dhamma and not conducive to physical, moral, and spiritual well-being is just the opposite of what is meant by a suitable environment. When selection of a place for residence is considered, a Buddhist bears in mind the advantage of being near a source of Dhamma, besides, of course, more mundane advantages, such as nearness to his work. I am not sure about what Pubecha Kata Punyata means. I think we as Buddhists should understand what Pubecha Kata Punyata means. Could you please explain about it? Pubecha Kata Punyata, merit made in the past. A Buddhist, unlike others who take exist existence as beings with birth in this life, understands the range covered by the term Pubi, the past, to comprise a vast chain of existences, each life preceded by an earlier one in an unbroken and unlimited succession. Yes, the Buddha has said that the beginning of the round of birth and death is inconceivable, for beings are blinded by ignorance and impelled by their cravings to make more and more kama, which means the experience of more and more lives. Action is performed by one's body or by speech or by mind. These actions are called kama. When will, intention, or volition is involved in the performance of action, there is no will involved, there would be no results of, or fruits of karma. At death, the continuity of these potential results of karma in the stream of mind, which includes feeling, perception, mental formations, and consciousness, are the only real traces of the individual, his body having suffered disintegration. These potential results of karma must fruit, and the only way that this can happen is through rebirth. There is no inheritance better than the resulting of good karma. To be, to be an heir to such an inheritance means that one starts life with an excellent advantage. It is for this reason that the Buddha praised the merit garnered in the past and declared our blessing in this life. Can you please explain the meaning of Ada Sama Benidi? I think as much as I understand, the blessing of Ata Sama Benidi, which means self-rightly directed, is most important for all of us. Because of lack of it, you may lose everything. Is it right? Exactly. One must decide on a proper objective in life and set oneself on the right path, leading to it. The emphasis is on one's own self. One should try to direct oneself to the desired goal by the efforts one makes. This encourages self-confidence and discourages dependence upon the grace of gods or men. Many people pass their lives in the wrong course, engaged in evil practices of the body, speech, and mind. Such people, perhaps we are among them, should cherish right desires and open a new and wholesome direction for their lives. Others, who already consider themselves to have a wholesome way of living, should review their situation from time to time, not only to avoid lapses, but to also progress further in the right direction. We can understand clearly what is meant by rightly directing oneself in this comment. The unvirtuous person establishes himself in virtue. The five precepts, for instance, the faithless person establishes himself in excellent faith. The avaricious person establishes himself in generosity. Along these lines, everyone has something to do. Next is Vinayocha Suzikito, which means well-learned discipline. Could you explain more about it? Well, for one, who leads the householder's life? This means abstaining from the 10 courses of unwholesome action. The 10 that should be abstained from so that no one makes evil gamma are. One, gamma by the way of body. 
killing living beings, taking what is not given, wrong conduct and sexual desires. Two, come up by the way of speech, false speech, malicious speech, harsh speech, and gossip. Three, come up by the way of mind, covetousness, ill will, and wrong views. I agree. A layman who disciplines himself in these ten is rightly called an excellent person. People like this are sure to make further gains on a path than ever they make efforts. The moral discipline in the case of a monk is stricter than for a householder. He must train himself not to fall into the various classes of offenses laid down by the Buddha. Could someone please explain the meaning and importance of Madabidu Ubatanam? Madabidu Ubatanam means adequately supporting, looking after properly, waiting on patiently, and rendering proper service to mother and father. The Bodha's teaching that children's step to parents is so great that it can be never be repaid by only material support. One should certainly give this, but the support of the Amma should also be given to them. Are they stingy? Teach them generosity and its benefits. Perhaps their moral conduct is not good in some way. Then lead them to see the dangers of unwholesome conduct. Or maybe they lack understanding. Open the gates of Dhamma so they can understand good and evil, the casual arising of events, and so on. Only in this way can parents be repaid by the children. Lord Buddha called parents God, Brahma, and it is surely better to pay homage to them with devoted service and loving kindness, which will bring them joy in their declining years, than to worship any kind of God unknown to oneself personally. A good Buddhist thinks and acts in this way towards his parents. I, who was sustained by them, shall sustain them. I shall do their work for them. I shall keep up their family traditions. I shall make myself worthy of my inheritance. I shall make continual offerings for them when they have died. These are the Buddha's words to Yaman Ning Singhala. Regarding the last word, this means the well-known Buddhist practice of giving alms to bhikkhus and others on death anniversaries and dedicating the merits to those who have died. In this way, parents are even supported even beyond this life. This is a blessing for those who are so kind and grateful as they have the chance to make much good karma. Can someone explain what Buddha Darasa Sangaho means? Buddha Darasa Sangaho, cherishing one's wife and children. Surely everyone knows that this should be done, but one also hears of many cases when they are neglected or abandoned by a husband gone elsewhere. When a man has such commitments, he has the duty to support the wife and help the children. The Buddha taught young Singala that a husband can help his wife in five ways, by cherishing her, by not looking down on her, by not being unfaithful to her, by giving her authority in her sphere of work, and by making presents to her of such things as ornaments. Any way of helpfulness which is in accord with the Dhamma is a true blessing because all such actions are good karma, wholesome and with happy results. If done in the right spirit, cherishing wife and children must bring harmony into the home, and just in this life, to live at peace with others is a blessing. What of the good result in lives to come? Can you please explain the meaning and importance of Garawo Cha? Garawo Cha, reverence. This includes the proper veneration of Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha and respect for parents and teachers, wise people, good persons, and elders. In fact, a general high regard for everyone. Even the Buddha, after his enlightenment, surveyed the world to try to find a teacher to revere. When he realized that no teacher surpassed his own attendance, he then proclaimed in verse that he would live, revering the Dhamma through which enlightenment had been discovered. And the Arahat disciples too had reverence for the Buddha as their guide, for the Dhamma, for other senior bhikkhus, and for the way of training. The further one has gone along the path of Dhamma, the more reverence one has for it, and for others who also practice correctly. It is not that reverence grows less as one practices. This is a way of estimating one's own position, 
for if a lot of pride and conceit can be seen, then one has not got very far. How does one show respect or reverence? The Buddha says that one gives such a person a good seat, stands up to receive them, makes way for them and for religious teachers. One places one's hands together and bows at their feet. This is a blessing resulting in good future births and harmony in the present life. Could you explain what niwato means? Niwato, humility. Yet another factor which stresses the importance of having no pride. The fact that we encounter a number of blessings which deal with non-pride should make us realize how important humility is for the successful practice of Dhamma. The person who knows it all, who always replies, I know, who has his own theories about Dhamma, or anyone else's theories for that matter, does not have humility. Because of this, he can never train under a good teacher. But the, um, the commentary gives the right attitude to have, to be lowly like a foot wiping cloth, like a bull with horns cut off, or like a snake with fangs extracted. People like this get on with Dhamma. Of course, this does not mean that one is obsequiously humble, just another disguise for pride and a revolting one at that. But the wise person tries to make displays of self less and less evident. He does not advertise himself, he is not exprobrient in body or speech, but instead is restrained. It is interesting to note that this humility in Bali is literally not wind, which ties up well with such English expressions of conceit and pride, such as puffery, vaporing, or more colloquially, hot air and gas. Boda sasanam sidam tetatu. Boda sasanam sidam tetatu. Boda sasanam sidam tetatu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Life below Yabi.